How many of you have ever been in a hospital or a doctor's office and just felt completely confused and overwhelmed? Right? It's like, am I supposed to go up to the desk and ask a question or am I supposed to wait over here? And how long am I supposed to wait? And what did they mean when they said that thing about the test results? Now imagine all of this stress and confusion, but you're with a critically ill family member who's on life support in the intensive care unit. In my experience as an RN in the ICU over the last 10 years, I found that this is such a common problem. You see, when a patient comes into our ICU environment, they understandably have many questions and need everything explained. Our job as ICU care providers is to explain their illness or injury, treatment options, risks versus benefits, the possibility of recovery, and sometimes end-of-life care decisions. As you can imagine, these are incredibly difficult conversations, and unfortunately, literature shows we're not very good at them. Literature shows that patients and families consistently report poor satisfaction and poor communication with ICU staff. What's more is that poor communication can lead to stress, anxiety, depression, and even post-traumatic stress disorder. Part of the reason for this poor communication is that patients and families come into our ICU environments with certain ideas and expectations of what ICU care is and what it can provide. Healthcare providers, in turn, speak from their training, education, and experience, but often forget that these people have different ideas and expectations. The result is two groups of people essentially speaking different languages and a communication breakdown. My research aims to fix this. Michelle's uncertainty and illness theory explains that patients and families cope better when there's less uncertainty and their expectations are met or managed. So essentially, take away the uncertainty, take away the risk for emotional trauma. So I plan to ask you, the Canadian public, what do you expect from an ICU should you or a loved one require care? I'm taking my questions, I'm surveying the Canadian public by taking questions from our currently used and validated family satisfaction and ICU survey, but amending those questions to be public facing. For example, instead of asking after a hospital admission, were you satisfied with the frequency of communication with your nurse? I'm asking, how often do you expect to speak with your nurse? With this data, we'll be able to better and more precisely understand the expectations patients and families have coming into their ICU environment. We'll be able to communicate more effectively by managing their uncertainty and the potential mismatch between their expectations and the reality of care. This will aid us in our collective decision-making and information sharing, which will ultimately prevent harm to the public and bring us towards our goal in healthcare of truly patient and family-centered care. Thank you.